Welcome, welcome. I got this old Game Boy in the dump the other day. And, uh, it's in pretty mint. It's pretty mint for the dump. It works. It does its thing. It's got a nice, uh, original copy of Tetris in there. And, uh, even though this was made before I was born, it really brings me back. Brings me back uh, to times that I didn't even have. So anyway, I'm gonna be attempting a full restoration of this thing today, or at least a partial restoration. It's like, the plastic isn't even that discolored, but I do wanna open it up, see what's inside, and I do wanna replace the, whatever the hell you call this, the be bevel plate, the bezel plate, something like that. Anyway, uh, let's crack into it. First things first. It's got annoying, uh, an annoying screw head in there. It's, it has, uh, three points on it. A three-sided bit is needed to open that up, which conveniently is in this, uh, this Viha screwdriver set. So, I'll start, eh, why not remove the battery first? Also, very shocking, uh, I couldn't see any corrosion on this battery bit when I, uh, open this up at the dump at my local dump and you'll see a one two three four five six screws remove screws because you know it's like it's withstood the test of time 32 years old show me a show me a computer that's 32 years old that is uh fun to use you know or like you know i could stick this in my pocket and still use it normally it's not even it's not even that much of an inconvenience if you're using a 32 year old computer you best believe it's going to be inconvenient all right that seems like it's all the screws Probably should have taken the cartridge out first, but I'm doing that now. And uh, let's look at this glorious circuit board. And first, actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna sprinkle all the screws out, put them on a little plate. Very practice. I'll even show you the plate that my uh, my good old friend Nick Ceramics made this plate. And now I put little screws on it. Also very lucky about this is that I'm not doing this for anyone else. So I don't have to be, I don't have to feel nerve wracked at all that I might be, you know, messing up a restoration of someone's beloved, uh, what do they call it? Game Boy. Game Boy DMG-01, the original Game Boy. And now we've removed all six screws and very gingerly, very carefully, attempting to remove the circuit board. Oh, it looks like it opens like this, and there's some special screws holding all the... Oh, you uh, see, and now they've switched the head of the screws. Now it's no longer three-sided screws, but um, Phillips, Phillips bit, normal, normal driver head. And I use my favorite. I got this screwdriver when I was like 12, and somehow it has existed. No problem. One. Really uh, beautiful circuit board, gotta say. It's uh, quite simple. Um, it's the classic green color, and I don't know. You may, you may already know this, but the reason circuit boards are green was for the human, the human uh, operators on them to be able to see the components better. It has something to do with the eye that I cannot elaborate more on.
Okay, I'm feeling a little resistance. A little bit nervous. No, we're good, we're good. Yep, and we're out. Soon we'll be able to give you a nice bath. And putting these guys in there. These are little uh, silicone contact button bits. Uh, there's a better word for them, but basically the, those black those black dots on them um, make contact with the contacts on the other side of the circuit board, as I'll show you later. And uh, you know, you find these inside of just about every old school remote or whatever, shit like that. And I will dump out the buttons. Boop. And now we have the front plate ready to be fully restored. Um, gonna make sure that these screwy bits don't get lost. Trip drop. Um, yeah, so what, what are we looking at? There's a potentiometer over there. We got the speaker over there. Magnetic. My, my, uh, my thing's holding on to it. On the other side of this board, there's a screen. Um, this side is all the, like, power power parts of it, as well as the connector to the cartridge that you put in. Um, and, and then we also have this little bit here, which is the audio output. Very important, because I like the audio. I like how the audio sounds on these guys. So I'm going to be very careful there. Oh boy, that was not that was not very difficult, I gotta say. Um, do I take these metal plates on or do I just... Whoa! <laughs> There's the power button just fell out. So, that's the power button. Let's just have a look at this circuit. And, uh, you know, it's great to be careful when you're um, handling things like this. Um, but, because there's no power running through it, uh, and as far as I know, I'm statically discharged relatively, um, there's really nothing to worry about, you know? It would be an impossibility to get shocked working on something like this. Um, so that big black box over there, that's just the connector for the cartridge. So I could put the cartridge in right now, as such. Um, we have the... Oh, and these old circuit boards are so fun because they're always they're always labeled really well in my experience, you know. So we've got it says right here this is the CPU, and it's just printed right there, made by Nintendo Japan, obviously. Um, and then we've got what looks like yeah, 64k of RAM, uh, and then uh, another 64k of RAM. This little tank over there is like. Um, an oscillating crystal in there, so it's important for timing functions. Uh, we've got, this is screen contrast or volume, but it's a potentiometer, a variable resistor. Um, on off switch, and on the other side we have screen, um, and these are all the contact bits. I'm gonna see if you can see that. Yeah, those, um, I'll point them out, these. These black bits are, um, they are the pieces that when they come in contact to the black pads on the silicone mat, it will register as a key press. Those are also bits that I will be cleaning in this uh, restoration. Um, I'm not put that anymore. And now's the fun part where we put detergent on the pieces that are not electronic. Link and this. gotta gotta say Nintendo, you did uh, so far a very good job making this easy to work on, which is sick. Oh, okay. I gotta remember to put these back in the right orientation, lest I uh, fuck this whole thing up. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna put this straight up in the thing of detergent. I'm gonna get me a little Q-tip.
The real question is, is this doing anything? Or does it just make it feel like I'm being professional? I have no idea. But continuing on that theme of putting things inside of the detergent, I'm going to be putting those uh, buttons and controllers in there as well. I feel like uh, I probably need a toothbrush. Maybe I'll grab. Maybe I'll grab one of those. With the toothbrush, I scrub the plastic in hopes that the plastic returns to a shade of white that closely resembles what it might have looked like on that fateful day in 1989 that this Game Boy was assembled somewhere in Japan by who knows, but this Game Boy has lived a long life so far and hopefully will continue to live a life again. Just giving a, giving a console a nice bath, you know? Um, you know, I, I imagine that there are some gamers that are, uh, you know, have taken a bath less than this Game Boy has. So think about that. Think about that. So now I got the buttons, I'm doing the same business of, you know, giving them a nice, a nice rub down with the Q-tip. And another beautiful thing about this Game Boy is the lack of dead skin and grime in it. You know, uh, repairing audio equipment, oh my god, you open those things up and it's like enough skin and hair to make another frickin' human being, you know? So, um... So that was a nice surprise about this one. Maybe it didn't really get used much, or maybe it was used by like a businessman. I don't know. I have no idea. But the lack of the lack of hair in here or drugs or anything like that is just amazing. We got all the dingles. We got all the dingles back. Back from the wash. Back from the wash. Disgusting water. It needs to get thrown away. Alrighty, so we make sure you're very dry and clean. Maybe, I, that would have been so dumb. I was about to hold up a heat gun to this. That would have been foolish. Very foolish. I'll not be doing that. I mean, what do you think? Does it look, uh, How's that plastic look? Exactly the same? I personally uh, yeah, I think it kind of looks uh, exact, literally exactly the same as it was, but whatever. Um, it felt good. It felt it felt very helpful to um, have that experience. I forgot to clean this, so I'll put that in the in the tub. Um, okay, another Q-tip, and this time we're moving on to some rubbing alcohol, um, isopropyl alcohol, to clean the contacts. And like, I don't even think I need to do this, but it like feels right. Um, I put some isopropyl on this. Normally I would use contact cleaner, but I don't got none. Um, and look, I am rubbing the contacts. And like, what should happen is I should look at the Q-tip and it should be a little bit dirty from rubbing these contacts from all the years of use, but um, Oh, I guess it's a little bit brown. It's a little bit brown. Here, check it. So, you know, maybe that was, maybe that was worth something. Clean, clean, clean. But I mean, the contacts, I, if you, if you look at these contacts, they are, like, completely normal looking. It doesn't look like there's any problems with them. Alright, sweet. I'm gonna do a little... I'm gonna do a little ring around the speaker because that seems to have attracted some kind of dust, which makes sense. It's the frickin' speaker. And this, this, this is all fine. 
You know, I was looking at videos and people are all cleaning the entire circuit board. I, I, I think more can go wrong than right by doing that. So it's good. I'm like, I'm like ready to put this thing back together even. Um, maybe, maybe I'll wait for the moisture <laughs> to go away, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. Very excited to put that plate in, that screen. Oh dear. Okay, so we've got some kind of detergent on here now. I'm gonna get another rag. All right, that looks pretty freaking clean. To the point where I will put this bezel on. Bezel on. Um, shall I remove that yet? Shall I remove this? What shall I do? I hate stickers, but that's okay. Okay, we put you on now. Nice shaky hands. Make sure you're full of coffee when you do this. And put you right in place. Oh yeah, that looks so nice. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. I think we're ready to put this, we're ready to put you all back together now. Humpty Dumpty. I'll call this Game Boy Humpty Dumpty because it fell all apart, and now the, uh, how does that story go? The good man puts it back together, who puts it back together? And little silicone pads are fine. They're fine. They don't need to be messed with. There's little holes in them, you see? These tiny holes there. And those are just to guide them into place here. So those holes, there's like a piece of plastic that goes through them so they're in the right location. And now we need the silicone bits for that. And it's the same dealio. There's little holes that doop doop doop. Some kind of an eyelash has fallen. Make sure there's no eyelashes there. Okay, 30 minutes, that's not too bad. I've been talking and stuff. I was really curious on how long this would take me, so, so far so good on time, but not perfect on time. And just gonna do one more little, little clean of the screen. I might even use some compressed air and do this real, real, real count. Electronics duster, you know? Hey, that was like, that was pretty effective or something. Okay, we put you back in now. I mean, this is gonna probably work. This will probably work. Okay, get the screws back in. Yeah, this is the this is the part in any repair where things either like really come together and it's nice, or it all comes crashing down. Okay, these moments of our truth. Okay, one final wipe down, I peel off that. The screen looks really nice. Again, the whole piece, the whole ensemble looks very nice, in fact. Uh, I don't know if you can see up there, but that's like, it's got, a, it's got kind of a new shine to it. <laughs> yeah, now I'll just be like obsessively polishing this because now uh, it's so clean. Um, now I wish I had a case for it, too, but I guess that's fine. And, like, anyway, it's, it's all, it's good. Um, what I want is the batteries. Pop them in, see if the thing works. If it doesn't work, I'll have a video of how to not restore a game board. 
bop, bop, bop. Bop. That looks to be the right orientation. And that, oh yeah, oh yeah. Pop in Tetris, the game, and turn it on. What do you think? Hey, there it is. There it is, Nintendo.